Hello everyone, I'm Don the Crown, and today I want to talk about how long it takes to go from being a fresh level 50 adventurer to being 1370 and ready to do the very first raids in Lost Ark. Now, I know there's a whole lot of guides out there for how to level up fast and stuff, but a lot of these are kind of outdated now because a lot of the methods of going through the tiers has been updated and revamped, so I kind of wanted to revisit this. I recently made a fresh level 50 character for a different video because I wanted to take advantage of a server specific thing where you can get a whole bunch of blue crystals with a fresh level 50 character. And so I power pass this shadow hunter here up to level 50 and which gives me like Northburn and Shushire complete. And so I wanted to see how long it would take for me to take this fresh character with no support on the roster or anything and get them all the way up to rating. Uh, and what would be some interesting ways of doing that. Now, along the way, I did learn a couple of tricks and also found some ways to scrape some money at the bottom of the barrel to really help myself with the honing because there's definitely a lot of times there where I was down in the single or double digits of gold and just finding any single possible way to make money really did help out quite a bit. So to start off, there's this great article on Max Roll called The uh, Road to Rowendell, or I think it's called Speed Run to Tier 3. I'll put a comment. I'll put this in the description below, but this is a still a pretty good way to go and get yourself just kind of started in Tier 1. Once you kind of go through the main storyline, you should find yourself in North Vern up here. And now if you bought a power pass, you should find yourself in the city of Vern. But... Uh, this is kind of where you want to start off. You want to get yourself on, go to the port, and at every single port there is a NPC that has this little scroll thing, the Ocean Liner Embarkation, and you want to go talk to him and buy an Ocean Liner to Lutera. And so East Lutera from here, you're just going to follow this route, and it is pretty simple. Like most of these islands don't really require too much fanciness, and it kind of gives you a general idea of the island stuff. Islands are pretty much designed to just give you materials one time for your first character, but there is one island that is missing on this particular map, and that island is a event island that's going on right now through the end of September, and that is the Maharaka Paradise. The Maharaka Paradise provides an insane amount of materials, and there are two dailies, or three daily things that you can do there. One daily quest that gives you uh, more of the currency that this event provides. Another one provides you gold, or at least a chance for gold. You can get up to like 30,000 gold if you're extremely lucky with this. And then the other one is like another like event where you can kind of PvP for uh, more, co more coins for the event. And this merchant here provides you with stuff in exchange for your Maharaka leaves. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the first tab, which is stuff that's good for your account. But on the second tab here, the honing materials, there's just a absolute ton of these. And this event is just incredibly insane for catching you up to tier three because it gives you the ability to buy stuff at every single tier. So you get a whole bunch of blue, a whole bunch of red. There's a bunch of leap stones in here. There's shards. Uh, and it's just really, really great. There's also a second event going on right now, which is called the Event Guardian Raid. This is going on through 1026, whereas the Maharaka is going on through 928. And there's no way for you to really access this remotely. Like you can't press Alt Q and use the integrated dungeon menu. Instead, what you have to do is go in a city to this red flag here that says the Event Guardian Raid. Now there's a vendor that's pretty close to wherever that flag is called the Exchange Winter Illusion Token. I don't know why it's called that. Maybe they'll update that to Event Guardian Raid Token. But that vendor also provides a ton of honing materials. And so between these two events, that is a lot of stuff. The other thing I really recommend is outside every single port, like right around here, on most ports on the left of it there is a little ship called the t and libra guild and they allow you to exchange uh pirate coins into more honing materials specifically the red and blue crystals and shards and to get pirate coins you're actually just going to go and take one of the things that you're going to get a lot of while going through these islands which are these high seas coin chests now, I do not recommend cracking open all of these right away, but what these do is they give you a voyage coin. And that same T and Libra people are going to be able to take your sun coins, for example, and turn them into pirate coins. And sun coins are the best coin to pick if you're going to do this. And so I'd crack open like maybe 10 of these or something like that in order to make pirate coins. And then you make that into 
the materials that you need. Now, one thing to note when I was going through this particular route is it did recommend to go and try to pick up the Leapstone dailies. And I say that this is not a good idea at all. The thing that I was actually really short on was shards instead. And so if you're going through dailies, uh, if you're gonna do dailies, you definitely wanna pick up one of these shard quests uh, that you can do three of them per day. And so you can get, there's two in North Vern, there's a, another one at Runaways Island that you can go and get pretty easily. And there's another one at East Lutera if you want three different, couple different options. And Runaway Island does have a little bit of prereqs that you have to do on the particular island, but it's pretty fast to do. And it's something that you're eventually gonna go to anyways. And then going down through here, once you kind of finish that first section, like this map here, the guide is telling us to go to Shushire. I do not recommend going to Shushire at all. There's a quest chain there for doing Starlight Island. I just completely hid that and didn't do it at all. And instead went up and did Glacier and Runaways. And that was basically done with tier one by that point. Now I do recommend going and running your Abyss Dungeon, use Alt-Q, and then you can run the Ancient Elviria. There's two of them. This provides a whole bunch of materials. At the end of the dungeon, there'll be a, like an MVP screen. On the right hand side, it'll give you the ability to go and buy additional loot with gold. Don't worry, you earned gold from completing the dungeon. And so you just have the option of reinvesting that gold back into more loot. And it's typically pretty worth uh, shards, definitely one of the things that would have pretty hard up on. There's not really a lot of ways for you to get those easily at this point. Uh, buying shard bags is a terrible idea. And yeah, you can't access the tower. Like I'm sure a lot of your friends are like, oh, make sure you do your tower. But if it's your first time going through, tower is not something that's going to help you at all. Uh, and so this is pretty much what you're stuck with. Now, once you're done with tier one, and this might take you a couple of days, also I do recommend doing your chaos dungeon like right away. Like I just went and ran two of the lowest level ones and then just honed up from there. Uh, didn't really set me back at all having to hold back on that. But once you're done with tier one, the next thing you're gonna do is do the tier two route. And you're gonna start up here in Arthentine and Stern. There's a quest you can pick up on the west hand side of the map. It takes you through to Peito and then through all of these islands here. Now you might see that Azure Wind Island is marked as optional. It is not optional. Azure Wind gives you so many materials, so much red and blue. And really in tier two, the thing I was lacking the most were these blue guardian crystals. I didn't actually even do any dailies at all in tier two. And I got through so fast, like, I'll, all the materials from doing the islands alone gave me enough to go all the way to 1040, which if you're brand new might not mean anything, but it means you're pretty close to being done at 1100. And tier two also provides you the opportunity to get into kind of the best thing to boost your character fast. And that is the challenge abyssal dungeon. You need to be 960 for this. And if you follow those islands, it's super duper easy. You'll basically, all you have to do is once you get to 600 gear score, uh, run those islands. And then once you finish Azure wind, you'll go right down to Yorn. You do need to complete the continent of Yorn, which is down here, which is pretty fast. Maybe it takes like two hours or so. And once you're done with that, you can run the Chaos Dungeon for Yorn, which starts dropping the Tier 2 armor. You, instead of honing this up from scratch, you transfer your Tier 1 material into that, which gives it a nice little plus one. You don't have to do that if you want, though, with the new system, I guess. But you do that for sure. And then all of the stuff you get from the island should instantaneously blast you past that 960 breakpoint and then this challenge abyssal dungeon provides a ton of materials it is actually like busted op how much materials you get from doing this like basically what these are are harmonized uh dungeons where everybody's stats are kind of squished down now granted your engravings do matter so you are going to be much weaker than other players but these are pretty easy to do overall uh, as long as you're kind of like doing the mechanics a little bit and if you need any help Make sure to ask your party for sure, but it provides honing materials and honing support materials and some card related stuff. And some of that card stuff can go for a lot of gold. And so you might pick up some gold on the way there, but I ended up with so many extra blue uh, leap stones, like so, so, so many. This like whole thing provides so much extra loot. 
it just blasted me through tier two absolutely just rocketed me through tier two the only thing that was holding me back was the blue guardian crystals like i was talking about i think i spent like 300 gold just to go through tier two a little bit faster uh but you know you don't have to do that either you can just like wait a day and do a guard do like do your guardians and do your chaos dungeons now let's take us to guardian raids and challenge guardian raids I didn't really find Challenge Guardian Raids to be very beneficial for me. It kind of took up some time, uh, they're a little frustrating, and they didn't really provide a lot of materials, so I didn't really do them all that much. Now, Guardian Raids are a little bit frustrating as a new player because you're not really going to easily find a lot of people for these. However, uh, they're kind of worth doing just for some of the materials alone. But if you're really struggling with these, maybe having a friend help out or something like that, or just absolutely over gearing it. Now, in order to progress through each page, you do have to have completed the entirety of the page before. So I can't go and do Chromamium without having killed Uranel, Lumeros, Icy Ligoros, and Virtus first. And so it does kind of require that you move up, 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 up. And uh, as you're going through these, like, the, the tier three or the raid level three ones are tier two and so requires you having done all of the ones at tier one first and so you know these can kind of take up a whole bunch of time i honestly didn't do a whole bunch of these i ended up doing a bunch of them later on i had some friends just like blast them for me and as you can see here all of the tier two ones i didn't even do until i was in tier three I was like, hmm, I can't do my tier three guardians yet because I didn't do tier two. And so we blasted all of them. But these boxes that you get for first clear does give you a little bit extra materials. And I kind of wish that I'd gone through and done them back in the day. Now, you might be like wondering, all right, so this is a really great way to blast through all of the tier three. But one of the things that you're going to bump into problem wise is going to be gold in tier three. You don't really have to worry about gold honing anymore in tier one or tier two as long as you're only taking your armor and weapon up to plus 15. But in tier three, you're really going to run into a lot of gold problems from 1302 all the way up to 1370. How did I get around that so easily? And the answer is pretty simple. There are a lot of things that you earn while going through this that's going to be able to be turned into gold. For example, a lot of the book boxes that you get have the ability to be traded. And so I would like go through, open up the auction house, and go and see okay what are the top class engravings right now from like average day price hey like right now gunslinger is kind of high mm, destroy gravity training is really really high probably nobody's buying at that particular price there but bar desperate salvation at 72 gold let's crack one of these open let's crack open a rage hammer let's crack open uh, a barrage enhancement and I would just sell a whole bunch of these also in tier one is like insane money making potential because what you can do is you can actually sell any of these legendary or even the epic accessories that you get like I just talked about in a recent video I would for people that are looking to sell these back to other people for busing so if we go to tier one here we can see the epic accessories right now are selling for 20 gold a pop and they are actually selling at 20 gold a pop so if i put them all up at 19 gold let's say i get 10 from a single chaos dungeon that's a lot of gold uh same thing with legendary these are actually selling as well for 20 gold right now the rares i think are ah, it looks like the rares are even more expensive they're like all bought up or something so yeah like there's definitely opportunity for you to make gold there as well also make sure you're taking advantage of the events that are happening throughout the day so if you see over here on the side this little swirly thing basically this is like a portal that's popping open and it just has like money inside of it if you manage to go through and clear the entire thing you're going to get a secret map at the end of a random rarity and that'll give you the ability to either go clear that by yourself like this here i can go and just do this i get like shard bags and other stuff or you can group up in a party of four and as long as everybody has one of the maps so this is a blue map if i was in a group of four people with a blue map we can all use our map at the exact same time basically and i would get four times the loot 
And these shard bags sell for an absolute ton of cash, as we kind of talked about before. So even tier one, tier two, if you can manage to do these, uh, I know some of the spots in the game have like bots that are running these. Uh, I know Punica, for example, has a whole ton of bots. I didn't really have much success at tier one or tier two, but I was playing at really, really weird hours. Like I said, I wasn't putting a lot of time into this project to get this done super fast. I was just doing a couple hours at like the end of stream or something like that late at night. So there wasn't really a lot of like actual players around. But uh, yeah, that's how I got all the way to 1370 in 11 days. Uh, as you can see here, my login thing, we're at 14 days now. I've gotten my complete legendary set. My engravings are still super scuffed. My skill points are still super scuffed. My runes are all still super scuffed, but you know, I'm up to 5,700 gold. Uh, that's kind of cool. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. It's kind of a little bit different. Uh, sorry if I rambled a little too much. Let me know if this helped you in the comments below and come by the stream.